Good evening, everybody. Time is 6.30 p.m. And I'm first going to call to order a public hearing uh, amending the code of the borough of Westchester, specifically chapter 104 titled vehicles and traffic section 104-45 to change the direction of the handicapped parking space at 224 Biddle Street from north to west and to add a handicapped parking space at 504 East Minor Street and section 104-47.A1 to add parking meters on the 200 block of East Market Street. Mr. Metric, you want to take over? Thank you very much. This proposed ordinance would establish a couple of handicapped parking spaces in the borough and also establish uh, a zone within the borough that is currently not permitted for um, single space meters and, and metered parking. It would create a new metered parking area on the 200 block of East Market Street. I have two items to enter into the record. B1 is a proof of publication in the Daily Local News on September 12, 2022. And Exhibit B2, which is an email dated September 7, 2022 from Jill Kirk to the Daily Local News and Law Library, Law Library providing proposed amendment for public inspection. At this time, are there any questions from council regarding this zoning amendment? Uh, excuse me, this um, ordinance amendment. Uh, I don't have a question, but I, are we handling both of these items under the same public hearing? The second, the second item too. I didn't read that part. The amending the code uh, for chapter seventy-seven. We are not. That, okay. That will be held as a separate matter. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. All right. But there are, to clarify, there are two matters in this hearing to consider. It's the establishment of a handicapped parking space in two locations and to uh, allow for metered parking on the 200 block of East Market. Understood. Questions up here or comments or no? Okay. Seeing no comments from council, are there comments from the public on this proposed amendment? Please approach the podium and state your name and address and uh, for the record, thank you. Thank you, Sean. My name is Kevin Mash. Um, I live 419 North Walnut Street. I'm soon to be moving a business to- Excuse me, you yeah. spelled your name N-A-S-H. -S You're welcome. Um, I had originally addressed uh, the borough manager and I believe Sheila Vaccaro. Sheila Vaccaro, thank you. Uh, seeing if we could do something with the parking on the 200 block of East Market Street. Uh, right now, it's three-hour parking. It's not enforced, and there's there's cars that are left there for hours, days at a time, making it virtually impossible to run a retail business. Um, what we were looking for, in addition to putting in some meters to get some more turnover, uh, we had requested the possibility of having two loading zones, 15-minute turnover loading zones, much like we see in other parts of the borough, specifically in front of Lorenzo's and in front of the Old Star Social Club, which is where we're going to be moving our business. Um, my inquiry right now is just to see if that's a possibility that we can tack that on to this amendment so that in front of those two businesses, there are loading zones. So our customers who are coming in to drop things off, pick up sandwiches, uh, we have UPS and FedEx deliveries throughout the day, uh, just making it a little bit more easy to run a retail business in a district that is a retail overlay district. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Metric is, is, I mean, this is a, a published um, ordinance. Are we able to make some kind of amendment like that? Or I feel like we'd have to revisit that. No, if you've made any substantive changes to the ordinance, you'd have to schedule another hearing, but this matter could be taken up in committee. So what, what I would say, Mr. Mr. Mash is that, um, that we couldn't add that to this specifically because this is an ordinance and we had to publish it and uh, we can't make substantive changes, but it, that is something we can discuss. We just have to go back to our parking committee next month and then we can work it through there. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, great. All right. Are there any other comments from the public on this ordinance amendment? Uh, seeing none, this ordinance is in a position to be uh, proposed for adoption by council. Mr. Uh, Stefano, I make a motion we uh, accept the, the changes in 104 vehicles and traffic. I second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Metric, motion was made and seconded to approve the ordinances written. 
Uh, would you please uh, call the question? Mr. Flynn? Yes. Ms. Vaccaro? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. McCoy? Yes. Ms. Dorsey? Yes. And Mr. Stefano? Yes. So the motion uh, carries 7 0. Um, still in this public hearing, moving on to our next uh, item, which is amending the code of the Borough of Westchester, specifically Chapter 77 of the Code of Borough of Westchester, titled Parking Program Residential, to revise the definition of holiday in Section 77 2 and to remove all references to parking stickers throughout the chapter. This sounds like housekeeping, if I'm correct. You are correct. The ordinance amendment for before council at this second hearing this evening is to correct um, non substantive vocabulary and references to uh, certain items that aren't employed by the parking pro department to in to in its residential parking program. So this you are correct. This is mainly a housekeeping ordinance. I have uh, two uh, exhibits I'd like to enter into the record. B1 is a proof of publication in the daily local news on September 12, 2022. And B2 is an email dated September 7, 2022 from Jill Kirk to the daily local news and law library providing proposed amendment for public inspection. Are there any comments from council on this ordinance? Yes, could you state the specific holidays? The holidays shall be New Year's Day, Martin Luther King's birthday, President's Day, Good Friday, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas Day. I'd like to make a motion to amend that. There's a new federal holiday, Juneteenth. Motions on the table to add Juneteenth as a holiday in there. I second. Okay. Um, is that 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 wouldn't consider be substantive change, correct, Mr. Metric? We would have to uh, re-advertise for this one. You do since it's adding a holiday. Yeah. Um, that being said, would you rather? Table this entire one and just add that to it, Mr. McGinnis. Would that satisfy you, or would you rather just vote on this and then do it again with another one? I feel like if we just continue this to be quicker than going through the whole process again, does that make sense? I, I think whatever is going to be easier to add that holiday that I would be comfortable with. Then I would suggest continuing the hearing to um, our October business meeting, and we can effect make this change and republish the ordinance with it. Sounds good. Do we have to vote on it since there was a motion a second? We have to vote on adding that. It would be appropriate to determine the will of council to call a vote. Okay. So the motion was made and seconded to add Juneteenth as one of the holidays under this ordinance. Um, any further discussion on that? Okay. Any public comment on that? All right. Mr. Metric, would you uh, please call the question on, on the adding that? Uh, Mr. Flynn? Yes. Ms. Vaccaro? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. McCoy? Yes. Ms. Dorsey? Yes. And Mr. Stefano? Yes. So the motion carries 7 0 to add that in uh, to the proposed uh, ordinance change. And at this point, do we, can we just close the hearing and say that we're going to continue it next month? Correct? Okay. So um, we're going to close the public hearing on this and we'll continue this next month in October meetings. Okay, moving on to our regular borough council work session. Um, that's our call to order. Uh, if we can move on to item number two, which is our pledge of allegiance. Uh, can I hit, please have that led by Mr. Flynn? Thank you. Okay, uh, before we get on to item three, just wanted to make a, a brief comment that we will be talking about 
um, our budget tomorrow night, not tonight, in case anybody was wondering. So um, I know that's coming up and we're in that season. So tomorrow night we'll be having a discussion and a presentation about the budget. Uh, item three is comments, suggestions, petitions by residents and attendants regarding items that are not on the agenda. If anybody has uh, anything to come, please come up to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Hello, my name is Dante D'Andre. I live at 301 East Marshall Street, apartment 109, Westchester. Hey, Don, can you please spell your last name? Uh, it's a little bit of a doozy. D apostrophe, capital A, N, D, R, E, A. All right. Uh, I am a cyclist and a resident of Westchester. And to be honest, the city, even though it's very walkable, uh, traffic is what it is, but it's not very cyclist friendly. And one of the things I was hoping to discuss when the Gay Street open air, uh, open air market discussion comes up is that. But in the meantime, I would also uh, like to encourage possibly some degree of discussion regarding the ordinances uh, in, as it relates to cycling, particularly on the sidewalks. Um, I'm still in the present uh, process of doing more research. I actually was intending on consulting with borough police officers at one point. Uh, but I believe that there are certain hours during which it would be reasonable to allow cyclists to use the sidewalks and that because to be blunt, uh, cyclists, we don't belong on the streets. Our vehicles are much smaller, much slower and much more fragile than cars. And even though I am aware of the safety hazards of allowing cyclists on the sidewalk and the historical problems that may have caused, I believe that it would be in the interest of safety for the borough to possibly consider expanding cyclist access to the uh, sidewalks, possibly during limited hours. The specifics I have not decided yet, but this is something that I'm in, I have a good deal of interest in and I would encourage borough council to take into consideration. Thank you. Mr. DeAndre, just to clarify, you're, you would like something along the lines of having cyclists on the sidewalk, but in regards to the open air marketplace or just in general? Just in general, the open air marketplace would, uh, I plan on discussing that at that hearing. So, yeah, sure. Cyclists is, it's an issue and, and I hear you. And I think, I believe our town could be way more cyclist friendly for sure. Um, I would suggest that this goes, um, something along the lines that gets discussed at our public safety meeting. Okay, um, and I think that could be added. Ms. Dorsey is actually the chair of the public safety. Uh, I think that could be added possibly next month and, and for sure we could, we could talk about that then. All right, I'd be happy to be there. Thank you. You got it. Any other comments? Okay, we're going to move on to item 4, which is approve the request from the mayor to hire 1 patrol officer. I think the mayor is away. Correct? So, chief Moore, are you going to talk on this again? Yes, thank you, Mr. Don. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stefano. Good though. Yeah, thank you. Again, thank you, Mr. Stefano. On behalf of Mayor De Baptiste, who is currently traveling back to the borough and unable to attend tonight's meeting. In her place, I'd like to present a candidate for consideration of hire for the Westchester Police Department. As you know, last month, council uh, voted and secured four new officers that are being sworn in tomorrow evening. And again, we thank you for that. Uh, as fate would have it, we had another officer file for retirement shortly thereafter. And on September 6th, after nearly 29 years of service, Detective John O'Hare has retired from the police department, creating a, a vacancy. Uh, we went to our current civil service list, which, as you know, is a very in-depth process. We have candidates uh, at the ready uh, to bring forth uh, should a situation like this arise. And tonight I'd like to present to council for consideration of hire uh, Zachary Turner. Zachary Turner is a 23-year-old male uh, born and raised in West Bradford Township in Chester County. He attended... Bloomsburg University and obtained an interpersonal communications degree from Bloomsburg. 
A little over a year ago, Mr. Turner became a full-time dispatcher with our department here, and we would like to have you consider him for hire. He is currently attending Temple University's Police Academy. He began that process last week on the 12th. I'll take any questions you may have. Thank you. And while unorthodox, I do understand your circumstances for this uh, specific hire and, and the time constraints you're under. Um, comments from the council? The, the, uh, so, uh, he's, 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 he, Mr. Turner is working on his certificate for, uh, what's what it called? The 120? Is that Act, Act 120 state certification? Okay. And, uh, is he still employed as a, a dispatcher? Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, oh, is he going to become a, a police trainee and stop being dispatcher? Uh, prior to getting his Act 120? Great question, Mr. Flynn. The plan would be, uh, if council approves Mr. Turner's hire this evening and goes forth, we would like to present him, uh, have the mayor present and swear him in at October's uh, work session and swear him in as a police officer. He would then switch from dispatcher credentials to police officer credentials while he finishes out his training. Since Mr. O'Hare, O'Hara was here for, for such a long time. The, uh, I know that we in the budget we have his salary already already there. The uh, at what level does this new hire come in at? Since he's not certified as Act 120, it's the base base bottom layer for an officer that's attending the police academy. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, that sounds like attritional savings, which is nice. Um, good. Okay. Love, yeah, else. Uh, we we add this to consent for tomorrow. We just vote on this tonight, Sean. It would be in order to uh, have a discussion, add it to consent if you want to, or discussion for tomorrow night, and then have the vote tomorrow. Fair enough. Uh, are there any comments from the public on this? Okay. Then uh, are we in consent on this? Okay. Yes. We'll add this to a consent for tomorrow night. Thank you, Chief. Thank Appreciate you for your time. It. Yep. yep. All right. Moving on to item five. Approve the Business Improvement District Board of Directors appointment of Tyrone Taylor. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, do you want to just quickly uh, talk about this? Good evening, John O'Brien, Executive Director of Westchester Business Improvement District. Um, we have a vacancy on the board. Um, so we had scoured and sent out to various business owners who might be of interest. So currently we're at a complement of 14. This would put us at 15. We had one member who needed to resign due to too many family commitments. Um, Mr. Taylor is a resident of the borough. He lives on or is moving to Minor Street uh, by Everhart Park. He owns commercial properties in the borough. He's a graduate of Westchester University and he owns or uh, co-owns a business in the borough at 117 West Gay Street. Uh, the board met, met with him um, last Tuesday and approved his recommendation. You know, Ms. Ficarra was there. She also had a chance to meet Mr. Taylor. I think he would be a strong um, addition to the bid and we would highly recommend to council to approve him. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Does anybody have any questions or concerns about this, comments? No. Mr. Carroll, go ahead. Mr. Taylor was impressive and I enjoyed meeting him and, and voting for him the other day. So I will Thank be you. doing it again. Sounds good. Good. Uh, I think we'll put this on consent. Any questions that? Any comments from anybody out there? Comments? No. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. O'Brien. Appreciate it. All right. That'll go on consent agenda. Uh, moving on to under our act committee, we have the cons number, t number six, item six, which is consider creating a committee slash subcommittee to assist and support residents and businesses in performing historical research. And I know, Mr. Allen, you have something to request on that. Yeah, so I'm working out like the final language for this. I had, you know, how you mark a final document and then you do final 2.0. Final 2.0 will be next week. So I'm going to put this through ACT again. Um, and I'm hoping we can just kind of finish this off next month. Okay, that's so that plan. Great. So that being said, I think we'll, we'll table that till next month then. Okay, put that back through committee. All right, so item number six is tabled. Item number seven is discuss committee recommendation of the reappointment of the voting wards in the following order. So this is an order of preference, if I'm correct. There was options, the first most prep from most preferential to least preferential. 
would be one, option B, two, option E, three, option A, four, option C, and five, option D. And we'll have to obviously pull that up to show you what all those are. I would assume we would start with option B, but. Right, so option B is um, basically the option that, you know, we thought would work best for the borough if we weren't under such um, weirdly specific regulations. I'll put, I guess I'll put it that way. What it does is it takes the seven wards, balances them out really well, um, and it kind of like in the southern wards evenly distributes the student population on this um, super block. Uh, what's really interesting is if we look at those, um, that table that kind of explains the, um, basically the threshold of population we can have in each ward. Um, the super block of campus is one census block that has, I believe, I believe the number is like 2,700 residents. Um, according to state law, uh, we are not able to split that up. That's the response we've gotten so far. Uh, the county is willing to play ball with us on this map. Um, so it seems like the, I should say voter services at the county is willing to play with us on this map. Um, we thought this one made the most sense. Um, so we're considering this our first option. Um, it's definitely, I think the one that takes as many issues as possible into balance at once. Um, so we thought we would give it a try and see if we could somehow get an exception. Um, we didn't think we'd be doing our job if we didn't try to make option B work first. Um, and then option E, we could go to option E. This was where we run into a different problem. So here we do not spread the population out um, within those percent thresholds. Um, and it's more or less pretty similar to what we do now. Um, option E, I, I don't know if E made this specific list. Yeah. Yeah. On this, um, if I could just advise you, the, um, the map that you're looking at here is the existing voting wards and all option E is, is changing the census blocks that are west of North High Street from Ward 1 to Ward 7. Other, in all other ways, it's exactly similar to this map. And so just with the census being um, during the pandemic, like we just have like a lot of that population shift that happened in the South because of that. Um, so yeah, this doesn't meet those regulations and it seems like it's just a different kind of hurdle that would have to be cleared to um, allow option A to go forward. But again, we thought um, this was the second best option that we wanted to try. Um, then the next option um, is A, which is keeping everything the same. We thought there was a chance that um, that maybe keeping it the same is something that, you know, they might see like, okay, like this works. We can at least let them keep it the same for now. Um, given the circumstances that, you know, we're under trying to make this student part, like the super block work. Um, because as you'll see in the next couple, we have to get creative in some ways that are, um, I think, pretty consequential in a negative way as we move forward. Uh, so the next one, yeah, it's, looks like I'm taking a multiple choice test here, B E A C. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as you can see, option C is, uh, like I said, creative. If you look at um, Ward 3 specifically, um, what this does is it basically just chunks that entire student super block that we're not allowed to split up. Um, if we take that and just add part of uh, Sheila's neighborhood and not a lot of it, um, and that gets you within those population requirements. Um, so strictly speaking, option C does not um, go against any of the um, directives we've been given. Um, but the reason we went through all this work to show these options is to be really clear um, about the negative ramifications that will happen if we do um, adhere to every single rule. So the idea behind this is we are hoping to get an exception so we do not have to go to option C. Uh, and then lastly, which 
I think C is our worst case scenario, but option D um, does take that super block and make it its own ward. So think borough council election in the dorms, basically. Um, so that's why that became the last option. I mean, so what about having a student on council? That'd be, be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that would be fun personally, <laughs> but to require it is another, <laughs> it's another thing. Yeah, of course. See, when I initially saw these, I was like, oh, you know what? I'm open to that. It's not possible. It's just not possible in reality. It, it will not function as far as the requirements to sit on council. You, you, they only live there for nine months and then they leave. So you can't be on council that way. So a lot would have to change if that were to happen. Right. I think, Mr. Allen, I think what you said that, you know, part of the reason we have these options is, is to show if we're adhering to, you know, you know, the state law, this is what you're left with. And, and I think nobody would agree that this is even a viable option. So I think it almost essentially proves our point that something like option B or A um, makes, makes the most sense. Yeah, and that, that was our thinking um, on the committee as well. So, Mr. Metric, could you talk a little bit about if we were to approve option B tonight, or not tonight, but whenever soon, What's the process? We take this to the county, we take it to a court. How does it work? We get on the docket at the court of Com common pleas to petition the court to approve the change to the ward boundaries and make an argument as to why we think it's the best um, arrangement. And I think we can make a compelling argument since we've balanced population amongst the wards, we've divided student population equally amongst wards three, four, and five. And we also honored the Supreme, uh, the um, court ruling that happened in 1986-87 by not, by not creating a, a system where we're disenfranchising non-white voters. Absolutely. Um, what do we think, Council? Anybody want to give the two cents? I, I personally think we should we should be promoting option B, our first option, and uh, and doing that exact thing that Mr. Metric just said, taking it to the Court of Common Pleas and, and seeing if they'll approve it. I tend to agree. It seems to be the least impactful and the makes the most sense. Uh, this is a discussion point. So are we actually going to take any action tonight? Or I mean, we could, I guess. Or should we should we still put this through committee again? Do you want it on? I think we need to make a decision this month. Do you want to put it on consent or discuss again tomorrow? Um, does anybody want it on discussion tomorrow? Or are we okay to consenting to this? We beat this thing up. I mean, we did. <laughs> we did. I mean, the, the, the only, <laughs> we all know that C makes uh, the ruling from the, the Commonwealth. We meet every everything that they asked us to do see, but it's also the most ridiculous. Uh, so uh, hopefully whoever's going to argue the, the situation will be able to show how ridiculous C is versus what we actually want. Uh, so it, it, it makes sense to the consent and just move forward and let the Commonwealth tell us what they want us to do. Yeah, because I would think worst case scenario is they say no, and we have to go back. Well, they're not going to let us keep coming back, coming back, because it's going to no. cost us a lot of money to keep coming back. Of course. I mean, that would be, yeah. like I said, worst so, case scenario. Uh, but the person who's going to be argue, arguing the case, is that going to be our solicitor? All right. They're, they're going to know what all four options are, and they'll get a feel from the, the court on, on what, you know, where they sit. So Understood. Yeah. Right. So consent? Consent to option B then. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Any um, any comment from the public, by the way, on that? No, okay. So yeah, consent on that for option B. Thank you, Mr. Allen. And thanks for the whole committee for that. That's, that's a big lift, so. All right, uh, moving on to item eight. Authorizes solicitor prepare an ordinance to add a referendum to the voting ballot amending the Home Rule Charter to include action that will protect the reproduction rights of women in the, West, in the Westchester borough. Um, 
Can I, I, I would just like some clarity on, ex, like, I feel like we need to be clear on what we're exactly asking for here. So, I, I yeah, I don't, we want to take a crack, just to, be, just to be clear. Yeah, I can start off if you don't mind. Um, the process of amending the Home Rule Charter involves Borough Council approving an ordinance to direct the county voter services to to put to phrase something and put something on the ballot that represents the exact change you want to have happen in your home rule charter so voter services gets to write the language that goes on the ballot but you have to be very specific about what it is you want what change you want to effectuate with the home rule charter <clears throat> so i think it's important to have that conversation because there might be I can see two approaches to that, and maybe members of council might have other ideas. One approach would be to broadly empower council to direct the police department. Another approach would be to specifically allow, specifically address the issue of reproductive rights in the Home Rule Charter. Now that's getting very specific and granular with an issue, and our Home Rule Charter doesn't talk about other issues in that way. So perhaps maybe option one might be the direction you want to go in. But I think a conversation tonight would be helpful in advance of uh, a vote tomorrow night, perhaps to approve this, that I give the solicitor uh, good direction on what needs to be drafted so we can come back in the following month and be productive. Okay. So my understanding of what was discussed last month was very specific to reproductive rights and protect, protecting clients of Planned Parenthood. Should they, um, so we've got trigger states that have prohibited reproductive protect, uh, protections and they are pursuing, they are crossing state lines and pursuing residents from their states who come into Pennsylvania, for example, um, for uh, abortion or care. So I, my understanding was that it was specific to amending the Home Rule Charter to protect the rights of clients of uh, the Westchester Planned Parenthood um, from, you know, any legal ramifications that would potentially come into effect. Mr. Magas, you offered up a, a resolution or, or an ordinance that specifically spelled out that type of uh, information. Was that the one that was presented to the council? Yes. And Mr. Metric, do you have a copy of that? Could you read it so council understands? Right now. Okay, maybe for tomorrow night. That way there, we, we all know exactly what that, you know, Ms. Dorsey paraphrased, you know, what, what, it, what it was about. And I think we need to understand exactly the language that, that we're going to be voting on. Yeah, which is, I think, is what my question was in the beginning. Like, what exactly are yeah, we asking? Yeah. So um, I think that makes sense. And just to, for a clarification on the timeline of this, Mr. Metric, say we were to approve this tomorrow night, this has to make its way onto its ballot and would it even, is it even possible to get this on a ballot in November or would this have to wait till the spring election? Well, you wouldn't be able to get it in November. It'd have to be the spring. I think the, I think the latest the ordinance could be approved by council. Don't quote me on this. It might be January because you have to, and, you have to alert voter services uh, 13 Tuesdays before the primary, which I think is the date in February. Okay. Yeah. So this would be the first time since I've been on council that we've had a, we've had to change the home rule charter via referendum. So if I, if I recall. Um, so that being said, what are we good putting on, so on oh, you want to comment? Go ahead, Sheila. Just one comment. I want to make sure that what, what Brian McGinnis brought was failed in one massive point, which was not his fault, but um, it did not protect women's rights if state law was changed. And that Fair is enough. what we need 
to include in there. That kind of like a trigger, like a like the trigger log you mentioned, right? Sure. Yeah. 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 So that that is the most important piece to me. That that's it. Understood. So that being the case, I feel like we have a little bit more legwork here. Would it be appropriate to either put a discussion tomorrow night or just table this and go back through committee so we can get a little bit more of that detail? I, I think that tabling it back to the committee, but then again, time is of the essence. Do we meet in January? Yes. Okay, we do yes, meet in January. It's okay. Yeah. So then I think that's fine, uh, and it gives us time. Uh, by the year end to meet all of those deadlines. Okay. So that being said, we're going to table that item, put that back at committee, can I, so that we can get that. Yeah, I got you. One request. This is going back to committee, but can the committee make an effort to include the females or the uterus-bearing humans on committee um, in this discussion? Absolutely. It's going to, like I said, is if I if I get the language by then, it'll be sent out immediately. Uh, and then I encourage anyone and everyone to attend that meeting. And again, you know, hopefully we could have that language ready to go with all of your input. So, Mr. Stefano, if we could have that go back then to public safety. Public safety. Yeah. Okay. Please. All right. Got that? Table that. It's public safety. Okay, great. All right. Moving on to item nine, which is under our public works committee. Not much of public works here today. Okay. Approved selling three vehicles. On municipid, which uh, I'm sure we're all just once again housekeeping items, uh, vehicles that we're trying to, uh, you know, reach their time, their prime. We need to get council approval to sell anything worth more than five hundred dollars. All right, Daryl's taking notes. <laughs> all right, we get consent on this. Okay, good. All right, so uh, item nine is a consent. Item nine is a consent. Uh, item ten under parking. Consider the renewal agreement between the County of Chester and the Westchester Borough at the Hanneman New Street Lot 6 and discuss increasing the rate of $60 per space per month. Um, the committee recommended this 3 0. Uh, Ms. Vaccaro, anything you want to add to that or talk about? This came up as just a sort of basic thing that needed to be done. Mr. Flynn recommended the, the rate increase, which made a lot of sense and I was all for. So thank you. What's the current rate? So what's the recommendation of the increase? With the, with the increase says 60. We didn't discuss an increase amount. Yeah, uh, I, I, I want to, uh, okay, here's the deal. <clears throat> Mr. Jingles wanted, wanted to move it to $70, uh, but, we, but we, we got off track during that, that, that meeting, so I, the uh, a ten dollar increase because it's been a, quite a while since we've we increased the the fees, and uh, that that's that's what I was proposing, but we never got to that point. Okay, does the agreement can we unilaterally just change the the cost for this agreement? Well, it's a contract that the that the other party has to enter into. Okay, so there might be negotiations. Okay, Ms. Dorsey, I was just going to. Do do we know if that's a competitive rate, seventy dollars? Do we know what? Do we have other contracts with other entities that are running spaces? Yeah, well, spaces in the garages go for ninety for daytime permits, one hundred and twenty for twenty four seven permits. Sixty dollars per space per month is a, is a, our lowest surface lot rate, and it's a fifty percent discount over our hourly rate at meters and in the garages. 
Yeah, I was going to say at least 70 then. Yeah. So I hear 80. <laughs> um, I might suggest too that if I think this periodic revisiting of rates and fees is a very important thing to do. I confess I don't know the last time these were raised, but we should do this unilaterally when we do our fee schedule at the end of the year as well. That the next renewing contracts we have with all of our vendors renew at the new rate. And we don't have to have this discussion every time we have a lease. So, okay. Mr. Stefan, if I could ask a, a quick yeah. question: How many spaces do they do they rent? Thank you. Thank you, Dara. Okay. Um, so. Mr. Flynn, you're, when you had a committee level, you said $70. So, well, I n never got a chance to say it, oh, okay. but I would have said $70. Mr. McGinnis upped me by 75. Do I hear 80? I think 75 actually sounds like it, considering what the other rates are in yeah, comparison. Yeah, $70 in the parking garage. And, and a, lot of pe a lot of the people that work in the, uh, uh, the, the Justice Center, like some of the lawyers and all that, they all park at, at the... The, the parking garage and walk over. So I pay 90. I, I think, I think 75 sounds like fair. And especially since we haven't visited this in a long time, I think it's due. Um, we go with 75 for that rate, increasing it. All right. Any comments from the public on this? All right. So we're going to put that on consent. If that's everybody's okay with that, with the seven, upping it to $75 a space per month. Okay. Okay. Moving on to our public safety uh, committee meeting. We have an item number 11, which is approved the pending special event application from WC bid for our outfest, which is, was uh, slated to be on 10, one, 2022. Uh, I know Mr. O'Brien wants to speak to this first. Good afternoon, council, uh, John O'Brien, executive director of Westchester bid. Um, where to begin? So tonight, unfortunately, I'm withdrawing this application. I, the purpose for this event was to be an inclusive and welcoming event that was joyful, that brought people together for a community that is often marginalized. And, you know, when I first took this role, I met with a lot of you. Some were not on council at the time, some were. And we had discussed the idea of doing pride celebrations in Westchester when I talked to store owners there was that consensus as well, which is one of the reasons we moved forward with this. Within the last week, there has obviously been a lot of vitriol and hate that has been sent to you and I've received the same. Um, things that were truly disheartening and disgusting and just, you know, I, I did not see this coming from, you know, the Westchester community. Why I believe that the majority of this town is supportive of this, the overwhelming majority of this town. I do think that we need to retool this event, that we can bring on more community partners to help plan a successful event. Because right now, I'll be honest, I don't have enough volunteers. You know, with the concerns that have been brought forth, we have probably additional police that are going to be required just to make sure everything goes smoothly. Um, that's additional costs that I don't have the budget for. Vendors still need, you know, working on that. So, and I wanted to give kind of a little bit of background because I know, you know, the elephant in the room being the drag queens and why that was part of this. First, there is a huge misunderstanding out there comparing this to some kind of burlesque show which I think shows one of the reasons that events like these need to take place because there is a ignorance, I guess is the only real word to use of what was actually to occur. And one of the reasons that, you know, drag queens are usually fundamental to this is really traces back to the Stonewall uprisings, which, you know, often is referred to as the Stonewall riots. I think uprisings is a, probably a better term, which is usually, the birth of the pride movement. And in that, there, what happened in 1969 was a, the police had raided and were ordered to, to raid a, um, a gay bar and 
you know, what ensued was violence and they were beat upon. And there were two drag queens during that event who said no and stood up and fought back. And that's really what was considered the birth of pride. So when people wonder why this is part of that, that's why. So my ask tonight, even though we were withdrawing this event and it won't go forward on October 1st, is that council put out the call to the citizenry who I know is supportive of this to help us partner and plan a event that really shows off Westchester in a positive light, because I don't want this to be a distraction. I don't want this to turn into a protest where we are focusing on the negative. I want to find a way to bring more joy to this town. So I am withdrawing this request. I appreciate your support and thank you for indulging me with allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Um, I personally am really disheartened that this happened and that we are withdrawing it. I was looking forward to the event. Um, and, uh, you know, it's really sad that this is where we're at. Uh, I am 100% in favor of moving forward with, forward with some kind of planning going for, forward to, uh, to build support for something like this and, and to do it the way that's going to get the community involved. So, um, the fact that this is withdrawn, I don't think there needs to be further comment. Uh, on this, um, but thank you for your time. I appreciate it. So, um, so since there's no vote on that, it's withdrawn. We're going to strike that from the agenda, and we're going to move on. So, item number twelve: Smart Growth Committee uh, approve the reverse subdivision plan for 327 and 329 South High Street. Is 327 through 329, or 327 and three? Like. It's I think it's 327 and 329. They, they are currently two parcels, two separate addresses. They, uh, the applicant wants to combine those into one parcel. Uh, there's no construction uh, with this applicate the application at this time. They do plan on uh, an addition later on down the road, which they will submit for land development at that point. But their their um, goal is to combine those two lots to make them one office building. And they, they, in order to do that, they have to separate, eliminate that lot line. Uh, there are no zoning issues with this application, and the planning commission did provide a favorable recommendation on this. All right. And it looks like it was three out from the committee. So, yes. Okay. Any issues with this? Okay. We'll move that to consent. Oh, comment, Mr. Mr. Dow, Mr. Wood. Daryl Cook, South Holland Street. Will this change the parking requirements on the property? It will not. This is still located in the town center, so there are no, no changes in the parking requirements. They're not adding any residential units. Okay. Good. Any other comments or? All right. So that'll be moved on to consent. Thank you. Item 13 is our, uh, aug approve our August, 2022 HARB certificates of appropriateness. Um, there's items a, B, C, D, and E. Uh, I don't typically go through each one individually unless we have some issues with any of them and anything we need to bring up. There were no issues. Okay. Anybody on council have any issues, anything you want to bring up about any of these? Okay. And um, anybody in the, in the uh, audience here, any public comment? Okay. And everything was approved, correct? Yes. Okay. So we'll move that to consent. All right. So we'll move item 13. All of those go on their consent. Item 14, consider solicitor attendance at the zoning hearing to represent the borough relative to the zoning hearing application uh, number 998-611, East Neal Street, LLC. Applicant seeks a variance from section 112-602.m to allow three entrance and exit drives along South Bolmar Street. Bolmar Street. Um, anything you want to... Add to that? No, I mean, the, the community recommendation was 3 0 for no solicitor there. I would agree with that recommendation. Uh, I don't think this is something that it's not a, it's not a use variance. It's clearly a dimensional variant that they're seeking to, uh, help facilitate this development down there in the industrial district. So I don't see the need for the solicitor to attend and oppose this application. Yeah, I agree. All right. What, what development is specifically are we? This is uh, 611 East Neal Street. Uh, it was 
previously there was an application submitted. We, we did approve preliminary land development for a um, online retail distribution facility. Um, the property owner is now proposing two warehouse facilities uh, on the site, which is within the zoning regulations used by right. Um, and they are going through the preliminary land development process at this time. Okay. Mr. Gore, I have one question. Sure. The, are there, so not necessarily related to this specific um, change, but will there be any traffic restrictions with this development? Because so, though it's in the industrial, there are some residences. Yeah. The, the uh, applicant is here this evening. If you want to ask him any technical questions, uh, Matt, I'll try to answer that if you want to fill in. Uh, there is a traffic study that has been done, has been reviewed by the borough's traffic engineer. Um, there are no significant traffic implications at this time. There was no uh, offsite warrants associated with the traffic study. They are, most of the traffic is going to come from the south from Auto Park up uh, Balmar and into the site. They are going to restrict truck traffic from going north on Balmar. They can only make a right-hand turn to go south on Balmar, back to Auto Park and back to 202. So that'll prevent any trucks from going north into the borough. Um, you know, will there be a straight truck that might get up there or uh, come in that way? It's possible, but we hope that they learn that route over time. But uh, there were no con significant concern, concerns from the traffic engineer regarding that study. Um, there, there are, we do have a comment, and it, this will all come before borough council during the preliminary uh, consideration. They do have um, the traffic counts in based on the, what they think the proposed use might be, and they use a conservative number for that traffic study. However, because they're building a spec building here, they don't know exactly the specific use that is going to be in there. So we can then require them to do a post occupancy traffic study. And if there's any changes then required at that point, we can require them to implement those changes based on any approval recommendations that we give them in final land development. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gore. I would ask that, you know, much like I have in Ward 7, the no trucks, you've gotten a couple of those emails and phone calls, right? If we could do something like that on the residential side to help prohibit and manage that. Yeah, we're going to look at Adams Street there um, because there are going to be trucks that have to go up Adams Street to make a right-hand turn into the northern entrance for the northern building. Um, but I, I don't know how much truck traffic actually comes up there because there are trucks that go to Diplomat Demolition and um, uh, National Foam. So we we can't we couldn't restrict truck traffic all the way up Adams, but I don't know if north of Union may be a beneficial change. So those are a couple of things we're going to look at there. Thank you. Do you have any questions, Mr. Flint? Uh, you, Mr. Gore, when we have two significant buildings going to be going in here, and, it's, and you just mentioned it's a spec. Both of them are spec buildings. So uh, there could be multiple tenants uh, in, in the buildings. I'll let Mr. Adams answer that question. Yeah, thanks. So on behalf of uh, 611 East Neal Street LLC. So they are designed to be able to break the buildings up. Uh, the northern building, which is a little bit bigger, 360 plus or minus square feet. Um, that building, you know, ideally might be two tenants tops. Uh, and then the southern building, we designed that you could have, you know, up to three or four tenants in that building. I was just curious how the, the how the dimensions were going to break down because you know everybody will have different traffic flows, you know, based on on, on what they're going to do there. So yeah, so I mean, Kevin kind of touched on it. I mean, the main traffic flow for at least you know fifty three foot trailers be coming off of two hundred two down West Town making the left on auto park and then heading on South Balmer into the site. So we are, we actually do control the parking lot on the uh, South Western side of East uh, Union. So there's a parking lot there now. So we're actually gonna widen that on both sides to allow for that truck turning uh, radius to make that movement and then head up South Adams. And then, you know, we had talked about it with the planning commission about restricting any access North of that. 
Um, but really, the way that this building flows is most of your auto parking and office entrances will be on the north side, and your loading docks will be on the south side of the building. And really, that, that caters to when trucks come in, they want to back up to a loading dock on their driver's side mirror. Um, so it, it's just the way that it flows. So you want to kind of have it in a clockwise motion, and it's kind of the opposite for the southern building. So, you know, once the tenants are in place and we've identified them, it's a matter of just making sure that they convey it to their employees and trucking companies as to how to enter and exit the facility. Okay. Um, any other questions or concerns about this? I have a question, if you don't mind. Um, not knowing yet or being able to name who's going to be your tenants, um, what what typical kind of, kind of use are you thinking of? Will there be manufacturing in here, or is it just are we just talking about drop off and pick up and redistribution of goods? And yes, yeah, so these buildings were designed, and the way that we um, you know kind of calculated the traffic impacts was a uh, warehouse and distribution facility. So what you're seeing, you're probably seeing going up a lot, is just a lot of the networks during COVID, um, that product they were having a hard time getting from overseas are onshoring a lot more inventories. Uh, some companies obviously have excess inventories. Uh, so this facility you've probably seen uh, in Contra Hawken, there was a Target, a Home Depot, some of the larger retailers that are, are housing products. So product will come in here and then go out, maybe either for store replenishment, um, but it could be a multitude. Uh, the use of the property could allow for manufacturing, but these buildings are more designed for your typical warehouse distribution operation. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, that leads me to another question. Sure. Uh, so you have uh, between all the parking for the two buildings, it's like 400 and some parking spaces, which seems more like a manufacturing kind of facility than, than warehousing. It doesn't seem like you'd need that many employees. Considering some of the runoff issues, so you know, flooding we have in town, it'd be nice to limit the, the parking to the specific use of its warehousing as opposed to manufacturing. Understood. Yeah. And you know, Patrick, this building, just given where it is in the borough, uh, there's an environmental constraint on the property, which requires us to cap the entire site uh, due to some legacy environmental issues. So no matter what happens, we have to cap the entire facility and convey stormwater to underground. MRC basins and then ultimately and treat that before it leaves the site. So, um, you know, without having a tenant in mind and not knowing the parking demand, this is kind of, uh, you know, 1 per 1000 is kind of the general uh, rule of thumb for for warehouse distribution users, depending on who ends up coming to the building and how much, you know, how many employees they have as far as um, Maybe there's a quasi fulfillment operation within the building. So, right now, without identifying it, we just kind of maxed out the, the flexibility. But, you know, we'd be open to it. I just, we'd, we'd have to figure out a way to cap the facility. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments any from the public? Okay. Are we good with putting this under um, consent? Actually, you don't, ah, you don't have to go. put any, you don't have oh, to move forward. There's no action on it. Okay. Oh, this was for no solicitor. I'm, yeah. I forgot what the, the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Gore. All right, so yeah, we're, we're, we don't wish to send a solicitor, so this will be, this can just go away. That'd be a better way to say that, but this can just go away. That's what I say. Okay. Um, right, moving on to item 15, which is discuss repayment of the Uptown Now Performing Arts Center grant loan and uh, establish a revolving loan. Um, sounds like it's two parts. One, they should start repaying their loan. Two, we should use that to, as a revolving fund for other things. Uh, um, Mr. Allen, you're the chair. Do you want to talk about? Sure, yeah, I think this was, um, we got some, I think, really important background on this at the finance committee meeting, at least for me. Um, so the money for this originally came from a grant. So this was never pulled from like our capital reserve fund or from our general fund. Um, and the idea is that we can loan this out um, to members of our community who are doing things that we, you know, we feel are really advantageous and helpful for the community's growth. Um, Say again? <laughs> okay, sorry. And um, so the idea is we can continue to pay this forward. Um, so we loan it out, we get it back, and then we can do another project and get it back and do another project and get it back. And it's the kind of thing that we'd like to see um, last, you know, long after we're all done on council. Um, and I think, uh, you know, why the second part is in here is obviously we can't, you know, tie the hands of former council, all that fun stuff, but we can 
um, established this and um, I think we avoided the word codify specifically. I don't know. Did we use the word codify last week? I can't remember. No, we did. Yeah, but um, basically we want to make this clear, um, even more clear about what this is for and that this is meant to keep going. So part one is, yes, please pay us back. And part two, let us make it more clear as we do this again in the future. Yeah. And I, I personally think it was this was 200000 How much was this? $200,000. I, I personally think, you know, being able to use that money um, for other, you know, businesses that need help in, in even in smaller increments in some way. And I don't know how that logistically works, but, you know, somebody needs $10,000 for something, um, you know, they don't need the whole 200000 I feel like we have that money there. We could really benefit our downtown and, and other areas. So in businesses, if we could maybe think about it that way as well, if that's possible, hey, Mr. Flynn. Yes, yeah, so we, we have a couple of different grants. We have a UDAG urban development grant, uh, which we've lent out to other uh, principals. Like, for example, the bid, uh, we lent the bid, I believe, $30,000, and they're paying back, you know, the money as, as they borrowed it. And then, if, and, and then the uh, Department of Economic Development, that's where the money, I believe, came from for uh, the Uptown Theater. And uh, that was exactly the same type of principle, but uh, just a larger number. And they had a five-year payback period uh, with no interest and penalty or whatever. And now we're at the fifth year. And it's time to start, you know, re re reinvesting the money. So, and for the record, it's two hundred twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Twenty-five. Okay. Yeah, that, that's with the interest. Uh, with the interest, twenty. Okay, yeah. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Any? Yeah, Mr. McCoy. Yeah, if we're going to establish a you know revolving loan, we probably need to put some parameters around it. I mean, it sounds like an incubator kind of situation. So, have a specific criteria of what what meets that in order to to invest in it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are, uh, as you get older, you learn there's an app for everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, Barb and, uh, Mr. Met, uh, Mr. Leone and Mr. Metric can, can figure this thing out in about 30 seconds by putting in the dollar amount, the 3% interest, 20 year note, and it'll break down exactly interest of payment and the amortization table will be printed right out. Uh, yeah, and I'm not sure whether we have. Part of the ordinance, uh, the ordinance is completely written for the Uptown Theater, but once we receive the money back, I think, uh, as Mr. McCoy said, we need to uh, set up a um, uh, word, uh, verbiage on, on how we're going to reinvest the money, who can, who can uh, borrow the money. And what's the timeline for the repayment? Is this over, we have a- 20 years. It's over 20 years they have to pay back? Yeah. If I could really quick, yeah, I, I totally agree with you that I think it makes sense to um, to try to spell out more of our intentions, you know, and like what kind of effects we want to have and how we basically set up some guardrails as to how we would approve or deny a request for um, a loan like this. And I think um, tonight the idea is just to make sure that us as count, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but us on council, like we're we're on board for this idea. And I think ideas like that getting more specific is something that, you know, we could get this set up and then we could populate that list of um, desires um, just in terms of our guidelines uh, at a future committee meeting. Yeah, I understand. Um, okay. Yeah, Mr. Metro. Yeah, I want to recognize Barb Leonti for doing some extra research into the grant program and it very, it spells out very clearly in the guidelines that, um, Projects that benefit for profit or private sector individuals are eligible activities provided assistance and conveyed via a loan must be repaid to the local agency receiving grant funds and deposited into a revolving loan fund or a newly created revolving loan fund. Easy for me to say. And there are guidelines in the grant program for establishing and administering a revolving loan fund. So we have a little more work to do on our end to find the documentation. I'm sure it was done and we can, we can talk about this at our next uh, finance meeting to. To tell you where, where we're at, but, but, but we can, improve, we can consent to this tonight as it's written, because it just gives you guidance to move forward with that. Correct. I think I would like to discuss this at finance and revenue next month. And um, I guess the action of council would be denying the request for 
loan forgiveness. Okay. So then I, I assume that we'll take the first part of it and we'll consent to that if everybody is in consent, which is the repayment of the Uptown Performing Arts Center grant loan, right? So denying the request to not pay that back. Does everybody understand? Clear on that? Okay. So that's what we'll be consent to. And then we're going to take off the part about establishing a revolving loan fund and that'll go to committee. Is that clear? Did I make myself? Is that very clear? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, comments or questions from the um, comments from the public at all for that? Or anybody else? Okay. All right. So consent to that part of it. Yes? Okay. Moving on. Item 16 adopt the municipal minimum obligations to the non uniform and uniform defined benefit pension plans and the defined contribution plan. Um, so, with something we have to do every year, anything you want to add to that, Mr. Allen? Nope. Okay. Just actuarial housekeeping. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The MMO? Yeah. Okay. Any comments on that from the public? Or? Okay. We'll put that consent. Uh, moving on to other business, uh, which is to approve our August uh, meeting minutes. Any issues with those or we consent on those? Okay. So, Ms. Uh, Dita Medico, if I am correct, items four through 17 on consent with the exception of item six. Hold on. Uh, item eight. Item 11. And item 14. Does that make does that, does that all sound good? Okay. Do you have other business, Mr. Gore? One brief item on their other business. Okay. Um, I am fresh off a trip from Louisville, Kentucky for the International Code Council's annual conference and public comment hearings. You brought us all back baseball bats. Bourbon. Oh, bourbon. <laughs> uh, that's even more better. The bottles are a little empty, though. <laughs> um, I was fortunate enough to be elected by my peers to the uh, vice chair position of one of the membership councils for the Code Council. Um, I just want to thank Borough Council for continuing to afford me the opportunity to attend these uh, uh, conferences and code hearings. It's, it is critically important that we continue the involvement with the Code Council, not for the betterment of myself and my department, but the community as a whole. You know, being involved in the code development process is greatly beneficial and the education experience is you know, second to none. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gore. Congratulations, Congratulations. on that. And, that. and that professional development is does benefit you, but it also in turn benefits all. So I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. Any other business? Okay. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everybody.